Productions, boxing's first and only global network, from Zaire to the Philippines, Canada and the Caribbean, from the Middle East to the Far East, across Europe to the Americas, to Australia and New Zealand. Don King, the leader... will precede the big guys when the WBC strawweight championship is fought between the tremendous undefeated Mexican champion Ricardo Lopez against Ale Villamor, the number one ranked 105 pounder in the world from the Philippines. And in a special women's lightweight championship attraction, the exclusive Christy Martin against the pride of Ireland, Deirdre Gogarty, the pride of the Republic of Ireland on the eve of St. Patrick's Day. And here's another big championship fight for you. For the vacant IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World, that's the 108-pound division. Number one ranked Cobb Castro of Mexico goes against the former champion, currently ranked number two, Michael Carbajal of Phoenix, Arizona. Always exciting. And a previously recorded championship fight will feature Quincy Taylor against the highly ranked Keith Holmes of Washington, D.C. in the United States of America. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to a beautiful night that we have in store for you of boxing. How about that? Five championship fights of this card. I'm Bob Sheridan, and welcome to the MGM Grand Garden Arena, and what a night of boxing we expect. And it's really especially important to me, and especially exciting for me, because this place is going to be rocking. The Brits have come to the United States. Not quite like 1776, but it'll be the second coming of the Brits before this night's over, because they love Frank Bruno. Frank Bruno, in the main event, will be taking on Mike Tyson for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World, and this place, believe you me, will be some kind of rocking. Here's the international press that's in hand. Uh, I understand that uh, they've got over a thousand credentials out for accredited news, beaver, uh, news uh, uh, media type people that are here, plus uh, uh, the broadcast facilities that we have here, absolutely extraordinary. We're going in 26 languages, believe it or not. We're going to 130 countries around the world. There are some of the foreign broadcasters, and we welcome tonight the people watching in the Bar Network. 28,000 bars in the United States of America are receiving this broadcast. As I look at some of the countries that are getting this telecast tonight, it's really a rather extraordinary event. There's the BBC there, and John Rawlings who will be calling the radio shot for the BBC, but it's going to Argentina, Australia, the Bahamas, Barbados, Belgium, Bermuda, Brazil, the British Virgin Islands, Canada, the Cayman Islands, China, Croatia, Cuba, Curaçao, El Salvador. We welcome everybody in France, Germany, Guatemala, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Italy, and of course our good friends in Japan, Korea, especially Network 3 in New Zealand, Nicaragua, Panama, Paraguay, the Philippines, Poland, Portugal, and about six different outfits in Puerto Rico, all across Scandinavia, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, St. Croix, Tanzania, Thailand, the United Kingdom, Uruguay, Guam, Mauritius, the BBC radio network across Europe and Mexico. Welcome one and all. What a night this is going to be. The potential audience coming up to this fight, 2.2 billion people. That would make it the largest broadcast in the history of the medium. And I am glad to be your host for this. And this is a great night for me because doing five world title fights tonight puts me over 500 world title fights in my career. There's Ed Schuyler of the Associated Press, one of the all-time great writers in the history of boxing coverage. I'll never forget him. <laughs> As Eddie joins us with his great sense of humor. Ed Schuyler, almost eaten by a Lion in 1974 while he was drinking his Timbo and Shimba beer in Zaire at the Ali Foreman fight. Who could ever forget that? 
while we have the opportunity with all the excitement in the opening a very very dear friend of ours uh, passed away this week uh, I want to mention the family of Murray Goodman the late boxing publicist who took care of us so many years ago uh, we certainly are going to miss Murray very very much and uh, to all the people that are watching tonight in the brand new Harris Casino in Auckland, New Zealand, Don King wants to put a show on down there. What a brilliant night it was last night for David Tua and knocking out the highly regarded John Ruiz in a fight held across the country in the United States in Atlantic City. And Kevin Barry and Don King, I understand, will get together with David Tua and we will probably be bringing one of the three Don King heavyweight champions uh, to Auckland, New Zealand. Here's Mike Tyson uh, entering uh, this happened uh, just uh, a few moments ago we got out of his car and is making his entrance right now I understand he's just coming in of course there's three fights before the Tyson fight let me tell you about Mike Tyson this guy is extraordinarily extraordinarily cool for this fight Mike Tyson has everything going for him emotionally for this fight except one thing the crowd believe it or not in his home country is going to be behind Frank Bruno there's over 7,000 Brits here strong. There's John Horn and Rory Holloway with the hat on behind the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world as he makes his way into his training room. And what a great job Rory and John have done uh, keeping Mike uh, focused and getting ready for this fight. Here's the big wide shot here as the place is still beginning to fill up. This place is totally sold out. In fact, some of my people in uh, the United Kingdom called looking for tickets earlier this week. They thought they could get a deal here. The place is sold out. In England, $200 tickets, and there's only a few of them, were being scalped as late as Thursday for £2,000. 2,000 pounds. We're waiting momentarily some of the satellite systems and we're on seven satellite systems around the world are continually being hooked up all the time. Different countries are joining us at different times and there's a few seconds difference between time zones in different places as these systems become available around the world. We're all across the Atlantic Ocean satellite, across Europe on sky. We're down into Africa, into South Africa where we hope to be bringing the IBF heavyweight champion of the world and France Boda. We're going across India. We're on the satellite in the Indian Ocean. They want to see an Indian fight and uh, hopefully we can see Joe Hip again, maybe against Bruce Selden. Not that type of Indian, but uh, that's the best they can do in the United States to keep uh, the Indian fighters uh, uh, just their non-existence in the ring. Anyway, uh, then across the, most of the southeastern Asia, we're uh, into uh, Thailand very, very heavily tonight because they're very ex excited about seeing how they Moore, who is from the Philippines and of course we're well into the Philippines and there hasn't been so much excitement in the Philippines since perhaps the uh, Joe Frazier days when Ali fought over there and uh, you see uh, Ian Dark of Sky Television right there all of these people and German television in front of him and on and on it goes the ring walks are about beginning uh, uh, to start to begin uh, the first fighters coming into the ring will be for the IBF Junior Flyweight Championship that's the one 108 pound division. We'll see uh, Cobb Castro and Michael Cabajal begin to make their individual ways in. We understand not only we're going around the world on all these satellite systems, but the ships at sea. So a special welcome to the staff of the Golden Prince, uh, Princess that is cruising off Australia and the Far East, uh, and especially to all our Filipino staff that's on that ship. They're watching a la Villamore, and we hope that it's successful for you tonight. Villamore taking on Ricardo Lopez in the strawweight championship of the world. So the excitement continues to mount. We welcome just about everyone that uh, we possibly could. A special welcome in Australia to Bill Morty. Don King tells me that we'll be down, maybe fighting in Melbourne, Australia soon, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see all the boys from the Port Authority down there. As you see, Michael uh, Carbajal getting ready to go. So the stage is just about set for a big night of boxing to get underway. There's Michael Carbajal there, 39 and 2, 25 KOs out of Phoenix, Arizona, in the United States of America. He's ranked number number two in the IBF 108 pound division. Next making his way in will be the number one contender. Remember this battle is for the vacant IBF flyweight championship of the world. A special welcome to everybody on Network 3 television 
in New Zealand, Daryl McEwen down there. We know that you carry all of our fights at King Vision, and we're glad that you can be with us. Kevin Barry and the crowd at Harris New Casino there, you can be sure, will be promoting a fight in Auckland very, very shortly under the auspices of Don King and one of our heavyweights against the wonderful Samoan fighter that has made his home for so many years from New Zealand. Here he comes into the ring, Melchor Cobb Castro, 45 Four and four, 19 knockouts to his credit. He's from China in Campeche in Mexico. Here it is, the IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World. Melchor Cobb Castro versus Michael Carbajal. 12 rounds for the 108 pound championship of the world. Now we'll take a look at the tail of the tape and we can tell you that Cobb Castro is three and a half inches shorter. Their weight's exactly the same at 107. A year younger is Cobb Castro and he's giving away four and a half inches in reach. That's probably the most significant thing on the tail of the tape. Cabo Hall has a four and a half inch reach advantage. Now we'll take a look at the IBF rules as they stand there. The 10 point must scoring system, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round and only the referee can stop a fight. That's the way it'll be contested and we'll have it underway for you very, very shortly. We're waiting for the cue for our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr., and we'll get this underway. Both of these guys and their common opponents have fought eight of the same opponents, twice each against Humberto Gonzalez, both against Chiquita Gonzalez, the brilliant champ, have lost their championship bids. Humberto Gonzalez, uh, who they call Chiquita, defeated uh, Cobb Castro back in 91 and again in 92 and against uh, Carbajal in 93 and 94. So both guys have had trouble against uh, the brilliant, brilliant Chiquita Gonzalez. As you take a look at some other miscellaneous stats, you see that they have, uh, Cobb Castro has 53 bouts where Carbajal has only 40. The winning percentage is in Carbajal's favor, 95% of his fights against 84.9. But in career rounds, which is very important, it's Cobb Castro that has the edge almost doubled with 431 career rounds against 263. The experience in their records and world title bouts, very important. For Cobb Castro, 1-2 and two with 1 KO. And for Carbajal, it's 10-2 and two with seven KOs. So in championship type of competition, he definitely has the advantage. Michael Carbajal was asked, as you see Cobb Castro bouncing around, uh, well, what's the story against Southpaws? And he says, well, I'm so focused. He says, I've done a great job against Southpaws. Uh, uh, I doubt if this guy wants to mix with the early. All I'll have to do is cut off the ring and make him fight and uh, try to draw him into a real brawl. Uh, and uh, that's the kind of thing I'd like to see is a war. On the other hand, Todd Castro uh, is a pretty uh, intelligent guy himself and uh, he knows what he has to do tonight. He doesn't want to get into a slugfest or a brawl with Carbajal. He thinks that Carbajal will adjust to the lefty style. Uh, he says it'll be no disadvantage for Carbajal. Uh, there will be some of that, which I talked about in the previous fights, if you're regular on King Vision, that these guys, well, one being a, a orthodox fighter and the other a southpaw, you'll see their front feet get tied up. So uh, you can look for that during the course of the fight. Cobb Castro and uh, Carbajal says, well, he thinks he's slow and he doesn't react fast enough. We'll find out about that in a little while. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, and also, Cobb Castro said, I'm a thousand times faster and I have superior speed. We'll look for that. If he thinks that, we'll look for it. He's been uh, training with the brilliant Ricardo Lopez. So uh, with them uh, enjoying working together, as you see all kinds of uh, celebrities on hand here tonight, and uh, we'll give you the celebrity list a little bit later on, but does the great movie actor from the United States, uh, Jack Nicholson. We asked an interesting question to uh, uh, Cobb Castro. Uh, what do you do in your spare time when you're not boxing? He says, I spend it all with women, three women. And we're all looking at each other, kind of shocked. And then he said, yeah, my wife and two daughters. So the kids get a sense of humor. <laughs> he's never been KO'd. He's never been down in his career. 
His only losses, four fights in his career, and he lost all four by the decision. There's the referee that'll be in charge of this fight when it uh, gets underway, Jay Nady. Right behind him, the fellow with the glasses there was the executive uh, director of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Here's Ladies Jimmy Lennon. and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the world's largest hotel, casino, and theme park, the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. As we have a big night of action coming away, and it's all brought to you by Don King Productions and King Vision. In association with Showtime Event Television, Corona, La Cerveza Más Fina, and the MGM Grand. At this time, we present the IBF Junior Flyweight World Championship, sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. The President, Robert Lee Sr., Supervisor, Darrell Peoples, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The Chairman is Dr. James Mave. Introducing to you our judges for this bout, Bill Graham, Tom McDonough, and Dave Moretti. Introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go with the vacant IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing white trunks with red trim. He is fighting out of and representing his hometown of Phoenix, Arizona. He weighed in at a ready 107 pounds with a professional record of 39 wins, two losses. He has 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the 1988 Olympic silver medalist and three-time world champion in the 108-pound division, currently ranked the number two IBF junior flyweight contender, introducing Manitas de Piedra, Michael. his opponent across the ring on my left fighting out of the red corner he is wearing blue trunks with gold trim hailing from china campeche mexico he weighed in the same as his opponent 107 pounds his record includes 45 wins four losses and four draws with 19 wins coming by way of knockout here is the former WBC light flyweight champion of the world and the current IBF number one rank contender introducing Melchor Castro. Once again, a referee in charge, Jay Nady, now to give instructions. Do we have any questions? We have 12 rounds. This is for the IBF Championship of the World. I want a good, clean fight. When I take a break, I want you to step back cleanly. Obey my commands and defend yourself at all times. Let's go to work. Brief but important instructions from Jane A to the referee. This is the 12 round vacant IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World. That's the 108 pound division. You're looking at Michael Carbajal, the former champion, currently ranked number two in the IBF with a record of 39 and two, 25 KOs from Phoenix, Arizona. He's more experienced in world title fights than 1988 silver medalists in the Olympic Games. Taking on a guy that's actually got more career rounds 431 career rounds to 236 for Michael Cabajal. Cabajal in white, Cub Castro in the blue trunks. You notice immediately as you see Cub Castro pounding away with the right hand out in front of him that he's a southpaw. And that's an important thing to uh, uh, pick up in the early going because the next thing we want to watch is the front feet and see if they start getting uh, tied up, if uh, Carbajal will uh, step on him. Remember, it's Carbajal that has the power. Castro has the quickness and will able to and try to stay away from him. This terrific fighter from China in Campeche in Mexico is a terrific little fighter. Carbajal has more experience in the world title fights and that's what she's all about at this level. They're fighting for the IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World, the 108 pound division. This is a terrific night of boxing because we get to see the little guys in this one and again in the uh, 12 round WBC Strawweight Championship and they're even smaller than this. So we go from the small to the huge 
Frank Bruno weighed in at 247 pounds. Wow, what a night this is going to be before it's all over. And I tell you this, when we get closer to the Bruno fight, you'll hear the Brits in force cheering. You'll hear the old chants just like you would if you were at uh, Old Trafford for the uh, great soccer games that are played up there for the great Manchester United team in the red and white. But right now in the red and white, the guy wearing the white trunks with the red trim is Michael Carbajal. And his white and red means that he wants to take out the guy in the blue and gold, and he's got a tall order in front of him tonight. Round number one Stop. continues to see Cabal come up. He's a tough street brawler yeah. type of guy. Knows what he wants to do. Trying to keep that left hand in the face of the Cobb Castro. Castro actually ranked higher than his uh, Cabajal, although Cabajal has waltzed through uh, several world title fights in his career. He's a former champion, you know. Look at this time, the crowd not too uh, pleased because both of them are such uh, tacticians in the ring that they uh, would like to see uh, a little bit more of a mix-up in there. But this is the strategy of uh, Cobb Castro uh, to just continually show movement, show movement, show movement, hit and don't get hit, come in, duck, bob away, circle to his right, back to his left, throw out the hand, duck underneath the left hand of Cabajal, just make Cabajal miss, keep moving, sliding away, continues to slide, and that's all he does. And every once in a while he'll come and engage like that, and Cabajal will back up. So it's not what you call uh, the classic boxing match that people like to see. But believe me, this won't end in a decision. This thing will go with a knockout route, and it'll probably be off the right hand of Michael Cabajal. Welcome back to round number two of the IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World. The principals in the ring in the white trunks, Michael Cabajal, ranked number two in the IBF, taking on Melchor Cobb Castro, ranked number one in the IBF of this 108-pound division. I'm your host for tonight's Night of Boxing Action. I'm Bob Sheridan. Glad that you can be with us. Wherever you're watching in the four corners of the globe, it's a pleasure to have you right here with me in the Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, at the beautiful MGM Grand Garden. We are pleased to have you with us. This is round two in the first round, sort of a feeling out round for both fighters. It's uh, Cabo Hall, the aggressor, and uh, Cobb Castro, the guy in the blue trunks, taking his opportunities to attack when he wants to. It's a, an even fight to this point, and uh, kind of a lackluster fight because of the way the styles are really uh, uh, very similar in a lot of ways, in that they uh, hit and don't get hit, they hit and move, and uh, I think you'll see the action pick up, and it'll be fast and furious before it's over, though. These guys at this weight are usually much busier than this, and a lot of strategy going through the minds of these fighters right now, and you wonder with uh, Ignacio Beristan, who was able to engineer the upsets of uh, Chiquita Gonzalez, uh, that you know that... Uh, uh, but one thing is for sure that Cobb Castro is ready for Cabo Hall. Don't hold, don't hold. This is a tough fight for both guys. And Jay Nady telling the fighters, hey, you can't hold, hang on, and hit. Coming up to the halfway mark here in round number two of this, our first world telecast and first world championship fight on this world telecast tonight. And we've got five of them for you, so sit right where you are. <laughs> When we get closer to that uh, championship fight for the WBC Heavyweight Championship fight, we'll be 
telling you to lock up your children and tie up your dogs and throw the feet up, crack open a Foster's down in Australia and get ready for a night of boxing. But right now, uh, these little guys are what we've got for you, and uh, they better pick up the pace of the crowd. He's going to start chanting, and they won't like the chance they hear. There we go with Cabajal uh, getting a little bit busier now, and that's what it's going to take. Castro's going to continue to fight just like this all night because that's his style. He's a counter-puncher. He's a guy that backs up, and he picks his shots. And that's exactly what he's doing, so he's dictating the way he wants to fight. And you see when Pub Castro puts his head down like that and swings, that's when uh, Cabo Hall has got to clip him with the left hook and then follow it up with the right hand. A big difference in height here, and uh, Cabo Hall is trying to use it to his advantage. And it will be an advantage as the night progresses. He's just not right in the proper artillery range yet, but when he gets there, he'll start bouncing that uh, leather off the forehead of this guy. See the left hook right there? That's what it'll uh, come off of. It'll start with a left hook, because he can hook with that left hand, he can go to the body with a left hand, he can bang him underneath the ribs with that left hand, and Castro really has to struggle to reach him with his left hand. Again, Castro's a southpaw with the right foot out in front and jabbing with the right hand. You see how wild he is? So, Cabo Hall's got some nice quickness, too, as round two is by the boards. That right hand is going in. He's catching the Danny. Straight in and he's catching That's good. Round three will be coming up. As you know, following this, we're going to see something really special. Es el de abajo, es el de abajo, es el de abajo, pero es necesario más, más, para que repliegue un poquito su aventura abajo. Many people consider Ignacio Baristán as the finest trainer in the ball in Mexico. Ahorita, ahorita lo que venga más, lo que pueda. Después empieza a tirar combinación. All right, here we go. This is round number three. Bob Sheridan here on King Vision. We're coming to you live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. A big night of boxing ahead of us, and of course, everybody wants to see Mike Tyson. It's amazing what's happened to Mike Tyson uh, out here. I thought he was kind of upstaged uh, at the weigh-in. Uh, Frank Bruno wearing the sunglasses, so Mike couldn't take his spirit away with his eyes. And then there were about five or 600 uh, uh, British people on hand to cheer and rant and rave and sing and uh, uh, really make a show. And I think Mike uh, was kind of surprised by all that. But both guys looked in tremendous condition, as we know they are. Uh, but right now, we're talking about this fight that's in front of us here, Michael Carvajal former two-time champ to the left of your screen now, uh, kind of with his back to you a little bit, still to the left of the screen. To the right, a guy by the name of Melcher Cobb Castro, who's no stranger to the people down in China and Campeche in Mexico. All you people down in Mexico that are taking this feed in English, uh, say hello to my good friends in Campeche, and uh, why don't you just send some of those U6 shrimps up to me in Boston. <laughs> some of the finest shrimp fishing in the world Quick. down in the Campeche area in the Gulf of Mexico and that's where Cobb Castro hails from. He's fighting a shrimp in front of him tonight, a guy by the name of Miguel Cabal and that's all the shrimp he wants tonight. He'd love to take him out. Campeche is the shrimp capital of the world. We're in round number three. This is scheduled for 12, the championship distance. Hasn't been a classic fight yet but there's been times when both guys have shown a bit of brilliance. More of the brawler type is caught Castro. 45 and 4 with four draws on his record. Tough little cookie from down in the nice weather area of Mexico. Michael Cabo, you speak of nice weather. I was in Phoenix last week and uh, we had a terrific time there covering uh, what is called baseball in the United States of America. They are training for the regular season to start. and. Uh, Cabajal very, very popular in his home area, and there'll be probably a couple thousand people up here that follow him wherever he fights, whether it be in Vegas or Phoenix or wherever he would fight. Uh, they're pretty loyal fans, and there was a little bit of chat about Cabajal in Phoenix. They like to see him spend more time, and they like to see him fight more down there. He was supposed to be in that crowd that we had before the American Super Bowl down there in uh, the 27th of January this year. But uh, for some reason, he had to pull out of that fight, and he's thrilled to be on this fight uh, against... Uh, 
like Mike Tyson. You can hardly talk about the record of uh, uh, Michael Carbajal without mentioning the fact that in 1995 he uh, fought six times. He won all six fights, five of them by KO. Quick! Stop punching. Closing seconds now of the third. And the bell ends around number three. Another pretty good Carbajal round. You know, we've got an interesting shot at two. We're going to show you. Here's the pits outside. They're getting pretty exciting. They're cheering Bruno. You see the British flag up there. They are cranked. They haven't even made their way in here yet. This is outside. They don't realize there's anything but Bruno, Bruno. And with that northern English accent, uh, you know, they call me the Colonel. Uh, one of my followers, Dick Tedeschi and Mikey Sinello, were telling me that uh, I thought they was uh, chanting Colonel, Colonel, but I guess it is Bruno, Bruno. This is something. Six thirty Eastern time in the United States. I'd love to see those gentlemen. Uh, about six thirty Western time in the United States. I'd love to see uh, those gentlemen about uh, six thirty in the morning because they'll still be up, especially if Frank Bruno wins it. All right, this is round number four of a world title fight in its own right. These are the little guys of boxing, the junior flyweights of the IBF battling for the vacant IBF junior flyweight championship of the world. That's a hundred eight pound division. The guy in white, Mike. Carvajal, the fellow in the blue trunks with the gold trim, Melchor Comp Castro of Mexico, a veteran uh, of the ring wars for many, many years, Comp Castro, and it's a tough fight so far for both of these guys. I have Carvajal slightly out in front, but based mostly uh, on aggressiveness as Comp Castro lands a few punches here in the fourth round. Nobody's been down, nobody's shaken, a little bit of puffiness around the eyes of uh, Cop Castro, but other than that, it's uh, uh, nothing significant to report at this stage. You can see as well as I can, the, every once in a while, the front feet get tied up. You saw Cop Castro just step on the foot, and then uh, Cop all come back and hooked into the leg of uh, Cop Castro, and that's what happens when you have a southpaw fighting a guy with the orthodox style. It's no problem for Carvajal because he's fought several softballs in his career and has been very, very successful. The only person that's caused him any problem in his career really has been Chiquita Gonzalez and uh, he's certainly a great world champion and one of the great fighters of all time in this division so you can hardly knock him for that and by the way two of the losses of the fourth for Cobb Castro have also come at the hands of Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez as well. Junior flyweights, 108 pounds, a lot of guys from Thailand, Korea, South Africa, Venezuela, Panama, that's where they hail from. We don't know a lot about them. We had a chance to see uh, Carlos Marulo uh, a few months ago here on King Vision, but uh, I tell you what, it sounds like Don King wants to take the show on the road, so we could be going any place from South Africa to the Philippines to all the, uh, the Koreans that die to have Mike Tyson, uh, the uh, people in Thailand and Singapore would love it if Kaba Hall or one of the other little guys and uh, Ricardo Lopez who you'll see in a little while if we go down and fight in Thailand. I mentioned earlier uh, across the Middle East they'd love to get a fight in Dubai and the United Arab uh, Emirates that uh, all of these countries watching tonight and the word from Don King is that we may be coming to many of those places uh, to do battle so hopefully you'll have the opportunity. I know that the uh, television that we're going to down in Zambia and South Africa tonight uh, definitely want to see uh, the heavyweight champion of the IBF, a fellow by the name of Francois Boda, defend his title down in South Africa, so hopefully we'll get down to Sun City or perhaps in Johannesburg and uh, uh, we'll look forward to, uh, to getting down there as the bell ends the fourth round of this fight. So that's the story and across England we're going to have some great fights coming up on the eve of St. Patrick's Day. It looks like we'll uh, see Nigel Benn come out of retirement and face uh, he, he Stevie Collins in Dublin Island. Let's Dan listen to the corner but to Danny Okay. You get inside, work, work. Keep working. Whatever free hand you got, get inside that body. 
All he's doing is trying to hold. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to try to, he's, they're doing the same kind of shit. He's trying to run around and wait until the later rounds. But he can't, he ain't got no power. Just don't get down. Adentro trabaja en el cuerpo. All right. Por meses. Mira combinaciones. Ah, no, vamos. Te metes ahí uno por uno por uno. Take a look at Bob Castro. I can say he doesn't look like he has much power. But you heard what they said in Cabo Hall's corner. Don't get careless with this guy. All he wants to do is run around and avoid you. If not, hang on inside. Uh, he's finding a strategic fight that he should be fighting, by the way, folks. It doesn't make for a beautiful fight to describe, and I'm sure not for a great fight to watch wherever you're watching around the world. But uh, uh, these guys have a strategy that they want to execute, and it's working, I would say, uh, most favorably for Cabo Hall at this stage. I've got him ahead 40-37 after four rounds. We're in the fifth round of the scheduled 12-round fight. The judges, by the way, that will be scoring this fight are Bill Graham of Las Vegas, Nevada, Tom McDonough of Tacoma, Washington, and Dave Moretti of Las Vegas. Movie actor John Candy, uh, when I see that fellow Tom McDonough of Tacoma, if you ever saw around the world, my late friend John Candy, Passed away a few years ago, what a great actor he was, but uh, the time he played Tom Tuttle of Tacoma comes to mind. With all of the fantastic celebrities that are on hand here tonight, including people like Drew Barrymore and Lauren Holly, Don Johnson, my good pal Chris Christopherson, who did color with me on the alley a few uh, years ago. Eddie Murphy stop, here, you saw stop. Jack Nicholson. And you'll be seeing all these people as they continue to come in. Uh, many of you uh, will not know some of these stars because a lot of them are American TV stars that you don't see, but you know people like uh, old Snoop Doggy Dog and uh, Christian Slater and uh, perhaps uh, Damon Wayans and uh, Paul Rodriguez and maybe Roseanne and Ricky Henderson and Lou Gossett Jr. and on and on and on the celebrity let's go. Right now, go, go, the go. fifth round of the Michael Cavahall fight against Melchior Cobb Castro. It's a tough, brutal war inside the ring for these guys, but it's not exactly what you would call a big crowd-pleasing fight for the people that are on hand here. That time, Cavahall has the bounce away. He does a nice job uh, avoiding the shots of the... Uh, trying to get more aggressive and certainly wild with his punching style, Cobb Castro. Let go, let go, let go. The anticipation and uh, excitement continues to mount. You watch this fight, and uh, when it's not exciting, and you get a lot of the crowd is saying, how oh, you get over with this? Uh, the crowd get excited for Frank Bruno and Mike Tyson. Don't hold, don't hold. Okay, wait, I'll tell you one thing. The fight after this one, you're going to see Christy Martin against Deirdre Gogarty, and this oh, God, fight, God. I will promise you, do not leave your seats. It will be very, very exciting. And yes, I said Christy Martin and Deirdre Gogarty, those of you who have not seen women boxing, these are consummate professionals, and they fight better than men do in a lot of cases. And you'll love it, and I guarantee you, it'll be a crowd please was the bell ends. Round number five, and another lackluster round. Well, both of them are working hard in order to play that down. And uh, they're so much similar in styles and so much similar in ability, it's not making for a great fight. Now, let uh, you people that are taking this in uh, the Spanish language listen into the corner. It's not because the boys aren't working hard enough. It's because their styles, again, are so similar. Uh, and nothing explosive has happened. Nobody cut, nobody down, nobody staggered, nobody hurt. And that doesn't make for a crowd pleaser. But as we 
continue to talk and this uh, fight continues to unfold, again, I'll promise you that the next fight will be very, very action-packed. And I'll tell you what, you're going to see some action in this before it's over, too. This thing won't lull you to sleep, but it'll, believe me, it'll be a terrific night of boxing because the Ricardo Lopez Alia Villamore promises to be a tremendous fight, too, in the strawweight division. And then comes Frank Bruno and Mike Tyson. And you won't believe the way the Brits come to a boxing match. They came 7,000 strong. Some 12,000 miles across the big line. That's the Atlantic Ocean, people yes, go, in the Pacific. And uh, it may not be big to you, but it's a Frank, long haul from England all the way to Las Vegas, Nevada. See the fight just continues to unfold the way it's been going throughout. Every once in a while, Cup Caster will Michael, catch Michael, it with Michael, a Michael. pretty good counter punch, but it's uh, really more or less Michael Carvajal dictating. Uh, Castro looks better right now than he has in a while. He's willing to mix it up. He puts his head down a lot when he comes in. And I like to see Carvajal counter that with an uppercut. If he catches this guy with an uppercut, he's going to hurt him. Instead, he stays upstairs. Michael has got to, I would say, when this kid comes in, go with the jab and come go, with a right go. uppercut and let it fly. And throw it right from the hip because he'll duck when you throw the left hand out. He'll put his head right down and his chin down and then let that other hand. You see what he did right there? He did it a little bit, but not as much as I'd like to see him doing. Let it go right from the hip. And if I get Michael over here by the ropes, I'll tell him exactly what he should do. And if he does it, he'll win the fight in uh, short order. Because Cobb Castro is tailor-made for an uppercut right now. Go, go, and all go. you have to do is put the left in his face and watch him duck his chin. Watch every time the left is in there. See the chin go down? Watch this. Watch this. Now, see him faint. That time he fainted. Now, that time he didn't do it. Now, naturally, when I would want him to do it, he won't do it. Ordinarily, he, he uh, ducks his chin and he brings it in, which isn't a bad idea, by the way. But you got to keep your eyes up so you can see the guy. Ducking your chin is fine, but you want to keep your eyes up. He takes uh -oh. his whole head and bends it over. And then Michael's corner picks it up. Wow, what a number cut he's going to end this fight with. Closing seconds of the sixth round. Carball just totally dictating the pace. This is the bell ending six. We talked about the buildup for this fight, and believe me, uh, there is a tremendous amount of billboards. Uh, uh, billboards I talk about, and just as I say it, like magic. The director, Frank Belmont, brings it up. That's what it is like in the entrance to the MGM Grand here in Las Vegas, Nevada. World Heavyweight Championship. I'm Bob Sheridan, and that's exactly where we are, the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. A couple of British broadcasters on hand, and of course the British fans that are there as well, all decked out in what they call over there, Dickie Bones. Very, very happy to be here. They're a little bit more formal, but you'll see the Rowdy Cowboys a little bit later on when Frank Bruno comes in. This place will be rocking in a few minutes as we take a look at this replay from round number six, in which Cabo Hall did just about as he wanted to against Cobb Castro. All right, we're back live. We're in the seventh round, approaching the second half of the fight here now. Melcho Cobb Castro, the pride of China in Campeche in Mexico, trying to do the best he can against a, go, Michael, a game go, Michael. Michael Cabajal. Michael 39 and 2, 25 KOs. Cobb Castro 45 and 4 with 19 KOs. Again, Cobb Castro actually has more experience. 431 rounds in comparison to 263 for Cabajal, but in world title fights, it's Cabajal that has the big edge. Nice, nice uppercut. Yes, somebody did tell Michael, whack him with an uppercut. Danny or Angel uh, Cabajal must have picked that up because it's so obvious. It uh, really uh, was a situation where uh, Cabajal could take tremendous advantage of that if he will go to the uppercut. We're halfway through the seventh round on this scheduled 12-round uh, championship fight here. Melcher, Cobb, Castro, and uh, Michael Carbajal doing battle. Carbajal in the white trunks, Cobb Castro in the blue. Break, stop, stop, stop. Don't hold, don't hold, don't hold. And you
you see Jay Nady say, hey, you're not going to hit and hold here. You know what's amazing is I looked in there, Jay Nady looks like a giant compared to these two guys. <laughs> Jay's a good size guy. These guys are little. 5'2 and 5'5 five, five and a half for Michael Cabajal. And Jay's probably about a six footer. Nice shot that time. Come on, get clipped with a pretty good left hand. And that's the power hand. It didn't seem to hurt him any. He'll blink his eyes. I just get the idea that at any moment, Cabo Hall is going to pick up the pace here. And uh, when you do, you kind of ignite this kid. Uh, I mentioned before that a lot of the Mexican fighters uh, are kind of like uh, the Puerto Rican great champion, Felix Tito Trinidad. When he gets hit, it's like an adrenaline burst rushes through him, and he, he really gets fiery. The same thing happens to Cobb Castro. Castro's now controlling this round, by the way. This is his best round of the fight. back pretty good that time. He had a couple of even rounds for Castro, but uh, other than that, Cabajal has controlled the pace of this fight. And uh, Castro having his best round here in the seventh. And that was his idea to drag Cabajal into the late rounds and then outbox him. And if this is his strategy, it's working because this is a turnaround round for Cobb Castro. He gets this round of Mike scorecard. And on the Money Graham round counter, we're coming up to the end of round seven. sometimes with those wild shots with the left hand and that's his power hand the southpaw. He comes with the uppercut. He's landing punches at different angles. He's throwing right hands. He'll go back. He throws the left. Catches Cabo. See him beating him with a punch. We began noticing that in the last round. And this again is caught Castro's round at this point. Let go, let go. Inside is Castro's heel all the way. What he's 
doing is smothering the punches. He, this, he doesn't want to be here. This is not a good place to be. He's got to get inside those long arms. You see, that's why he stays outside. That's why it doesn't look like a great fight the way you are. But he lured him in that time and nailed him with the left hand. Now he realized he could hurt him. And he really chases after him. You notice that it's all Cub Castro, the aggressor now. Cabajal backing up. Cabajal wants to mix and do something. But this kid's movement is causing so many problems. See that? He continues to score. Even the jab. Only one jab went through there by Cabajal. And the aggressor now is the little guy. All right, the bell ends round number eight. Another good Cub Castro round. His second in a row. Hey, here comes Frank Bruno. Let's listen up and hear Frank's entrance as he comes to the arena. Frank, uh, just a very consummate gentleman. Tremendous cut shake. Here you see his body when he takes his uh, jersey off and uh, is showing uh, Bruno here. Listen to the crowd in the tennis. 40 and 4, 38 KOs, the brand new WBC World Heavyweight Champion. Frank Bruno. He's been wonderful to us all week with the British flag handling here. And it's going to be very, very exciting before it's all over. Look at the Frank Bruno signs. Very rarely do you see an American fighter in his home country not have the edge in the crowd. It's so rare here. But the Brits uh, are used to following their football teams and their soccer teams and all of their other teams, cricket and whatever else they play in that strange part of the world. They follow, and boxing is one thing that they've really thirsted for for years, trying to get a heavyweight champion who meant something, uh, and they have one now because Frank Bruno is the most popular athlete. In fact, I heard uh, recently Barry McGuigan talking, but he's an Irishman, and of course, one to judge the royal family as well. But he said that uh, Frank Bruno is more popular than the Queen. Now we won't say that. Family's taking legs and we don't like to whack them on that down. Even though it is the eve of St. Patrick's Day and they should be whacked. Okay, here we go. The ninth round of a scheduled 12-round affair here with the IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World. Michael Carbajal in the white trunks. And he's trying to take back the supremacy that he expressed in the first six. And it could be tough for Cabajal if he allows Cub Castro to take this. Uh, it's a very important round for him. He doesn't want the Castro to just waltz through these last three rounds. And he's trying to be more assertive here in round uh, number nine. By the way, on my scorecard now, with Cub Castro winning the last two rounds, I have only two points separating the fight. Let go, let go, let go, I did score two rounds even that the judges could have leaned one way or the other, which would have this fight dead even, or Cabo Hall a little bit more out in front than what I have on my scorecard. So think about that when uh, we get through this ninth round with three to go. Nobody's really established themselves as... The championship is there for the taking. Either one of these guys can walk away with his 108-pound junior flyweight championship belt. Very tough fighter for the two fighters. Not a crowd pleaser by any stretch of the imagination. But I'll be honest with you, I don't think either fighter cares about pleasing the crowd. They want to win this oh, championship. Hold it, Mike. Oh, hold it, Mike. A lot of money to each individual fighter. It's uh, Trump Castro doing a little thing, but somebody does get hit. Uh, in spite of the fact that it's a lackluster fight, it's him. It's Castro that's doing it now. You see him doing the little thing, ducking under the shots, making uh, the former champion Cabo Hall miss, making him back off, landing more punches when they come together. Bell ends round nine, and I think that's another round for Cobb Castro. I've got my scorecard now. Look at the uh, Cabo's corner. With three rounds to go, scored 
six. I see this as a very close fight. The judges are Bill Graham of Las Vegas, Tom McDonough of Tacoma, Washington, and Dave Moretti of uh, Las Vegas. We'll let you listen into the corner. Jack Nicholson again, the American movie actor. Very popular, seen at a lot of sporting events in the United States. Big American basketball fan of the Los Angeles Lakers of the American National Basketball Association. All right, this is round number 10. It's scheduled for 12. A fight that hasn't really electrified the crowd, but there's a hopeful anticipation, electricity feeling in the crowd tonight as they wait for Frank Burrow and Mike Tyson. But what they don't know is they're going to get juiced and juiced real well when they see Christy Martin make her entrance out here. This crowd will immediately come to life. And wherever you're watching, maybe you're watching at the airport Hilton in Boston, Massachusetts with my friend Annie. I hope you're all enjoying it there. And I'll tell you before it's all over, this will be a night to behold. So turn that sound up. The Colonel from Winthrop is talking to you. And all my friends in Shannon, Ireland on the Hill Road, watching on St. Patrick Eve, I'm sure you're all cranked up there in Brandon's Pub and Six Mile Bridge. Go up to the farm and check on my cattle, will you boys? Meanwhile, I'll tell you what's going on here. Cabo Hall and Cop Castro doing battle, and it's Cop Castro making his comeback really strong. He's taken the last two or three rounds here on my scorecard. Cabo Hall trying to execute, and instead, he's in the process of being executed because Cop Castro is really getting into the punch now. When I say really, it's nothing that's bringing the crowd to its feet, but in terms of really on my scorecard, he's doing it. And if the judges see it anyway, the other way I do, there's one or two things if they don't see it the way I do, either they need a German Shepherd, or perhaps some judges should not be at ringside, or maybe boxing isn't the exact science that we think it is. And of course, it can also prove that the same people can look at the same thing and not see the same thing, which we've all seen in boxing so many times. Nonetheless, this is the 10th round and what is becoming a very close fight here for both of these guys who would like to walk home with a belt buckle around their tiny little waists. And maybe that's why I'm negative, because you know my waist is up around 60, and these guys together don't have a 60-inch waist. <laughs> and that's a fact. <laughs> This is the 10th round of a scheduled 12 round affair for the vacant IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World, 108 pound division. We're coming to you from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. The principals, Cobb Castro and Michael Cabajal. Cabajal to the right of your screen with 19 seconds to go in the 10th. Remember, this is a 12 round world championship fight. And unusual for the little guys not to put on a better show. But again, the strategy of this fight is so difficult and so close. It's not making for a crowd pleaser, but it's a, a better fight for the guys that are in it anyway. It's kind of like where you're watching as the bell ends round 10. It's kind of like watching cricket, which you can fall asleep at. But when you're playing it, it's a whole lot of fun. Ask these guys from Britain. This is a guy that's uh, got a Cleveland Indians logo from the American baseball carrying a British flag. Fans continue to come in here and the crowd will continue to have the hopeful anticipation that is expected. That Smitty that I saw coming in there from the American sports uh, show? Could have been. No, he doesn't have a green hat on and his little turned up shoes, so it can't be. No, it can't be Smitty. You know, on St. Patrick's Day around here in Las Vegas, they get excited. You people uh, watching in uh, in Europe, and I know especially down in Australia and in New Zealand, uh, uh, the territory of a lot of Irish that were sent out there in the prison ships to Van Diemen's Land, uh, there's going to be a big celebration here tonight. I wonder what it'll be like if Bruno wins and it's a St. Patrick's Irish holiday. Woo! The excitement here continues to mount. Time! Time! Too much over there. Too much All right, you see there, round 11. Too much. Too much Thank you. 
Time in. Somebody Two has one. got to get going here, and if they want this title, they've got to really turn it up a notch, and somebody's got to take it. Right now, uh, it's there for the taking. Either guy can take this thing. I've got the fight dead even on my scorecard now, 96-96. I've given the last four rounds to Cobb Castro. The fight turned around in the seventh. There was mostly Carbajal in the early going. And Castro, to me, has looked better in the late going. And again, if they could bounce over here, I'd give some instruction to Carbajal because if he, for one, doesn't turn it up a notch, he's not going to get the title tonight. As little Cobb Castro has been coming on, you see the way he pounded behind the elbow there? You know, Michael needs to get going. And if Michael Cabajal doesn't get going, he's not going to win the title tonight. He's got to pick up the pace. Cabajal has got to pick up the pace. Or he's going to give this title away. Eddie Schuyler from the Associated Press yelling he doesn't have a title. And if he continues to fight like this, he won't have a title. I'll tell you that. Punches here now taking advantage of that reach. But look at the little guy small and inside body shots. Lyle with the left hand. Trying to line up that body shot that'll hurt him. He hasn't been able to hurt him at all. Neither guy's been down. Nobody visibly shaken. A little bit of puffiness around the eyes of Cup Castro. Nice shot that time with the right hand. No damage done at all though. No power with Cobb Castro at all. When the shape of the uh, features of uh, certain Mexican fighters, they have those high cheekbones from the, uh, I suppose, from the heritage of the Incas and other Indian tribes uh, down in Mexico, and they have a tendency to, if they have that type of appearance and facial structure and bone structure in their face, the cheeks will swell up and it really go, not indicative of the fact that he's getting beat up too much. It's just that he's been in a bit of a war. The Cabajal, who's of uh, Latin descent as well, doesn't have that same facial structure. Let go, let go, let go. But it doesn't show uh, Stop, so well. Wait, Stop. This is one of those rounds that uh, different judges could see differently. How do you score this one? How do you feel when you're watching? I got it about even, but I think that the, the aggressor has definitely been uh, caught Castro on that round. He's trying to come come in and steal it, okay? No lo dejes. What are you trying to do? No, 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 no. Porque que está haciendo ba, 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 ba. You better hear him do this shit, all right? That right hand is still landing. I want you to use it more, all right? And that, when you hear that 10-second sound, picale muere. This is the last round, okay? Michael, this is the last round. Round 12. Don't try and come with you, because he moves that time. You all right? Some hands way up, Michael, right? Yeah. All right, as we take a look at this replay here, we get an idea exactly what Castro was trying to do. And as I say that, it's uh, Cabo Hall that lands the left hook that gets through. He looks like a beaten fighter, but he's not. This fight is very, very close. Almost too close to call right now. I still think this fight's up for grabs. If one guy has a brilliant finish or a knockdown score in this round, that guy could win the fight. Here we go, the 12th round. The IBF Vacant Junior Flyweight Championship of the World. Bob Sheridan here from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hope you're enjoying it. Again, we won't uh, try to pretend that it's a big crowd pleaser for our opening fight because it just plainly isn't a great uh, crowd pleaser. But these two guys are working very nice left hand that they're talking and through there to the head of Cabo Hall. Cabo Hall, both guys realize they need a big finishing round. Both of these guys possess the immeasurable quality, the heart of a champion. Who's got the bigger one? Who knows? But it's Castro throwing more leather right now. If they say that, Cabo Hall counters. Fairly even round. Both guys need to attack. Cabo Hall really needs to juice it up, take it up to the end of this fight if he wants to win this fight. You know where you can a kid in the schoolyard used to fight in the second grade or the 11th grade or something like that? 
the fight went on like this all afternoon, you wouldn't say there was any win. Well, that's about how it is. It's that close. At least on my score. Nobody's been hurt. Nobody's shaken. Nobody's down. Nobody cut. And both guys throwing quite a few punches at different times. Big straight right hand by Cabal. And you see the wild shots by Castro. And every once in a while they land. Castro has been more effective in spite of the fact he's so short and giving away all that uh, several inches in reach, four and a half inches to be exact. He's landing all the punches inside. He's had a nice job working his way in. The reason for that is the total movement, the, the whole package that he has presented to Cabo Hall. If a game plan worked in the fight, I'd say Castro was, was much more successful than Cabo Hall. Cabo Hall is a can't figure at all. A lack of aggressiveness in the fight, for one thing. Although he was aggressive in the first six rings, so I don't know if that's a fair comment. You people can judge this as well as I can. And Cabo Hall much more aggressive in the early going. I think Cabo Hall is aggressiveness in this round is more effective than is uh, Castro. Castro is still aggressive, but it's Cabo Hall more effective in this round, I believe, at this stage. But it's been sort of that way in a lot of rounds, seesawing back and forth. Last 36 seconds of the fight now. Both guys working extremely hard. They both know they need this last round. And again, this is another one of those fairly even rounds. If you're sitting on one side of the ring, one judge can see it one way, on the other side, another judge can see it another way. And who can argue with it? Great people that are watching the Bond Network across the United States argue it out. Inside of eight seconds to go in this fight. There'll be no knockout. And this one's over. Good job, guys. I've got the fight scored dead even. It could be a draw. Depends on how the judges see it. I've got a 115-115 in my scorecard, and that would be just because, in my opinion, nobody really won that fight. It's a fight that needs a 15-round affair, perhaps, and it's the type of fight that could probably go 20 rounds before there was a definitive winner. Again, one of those fights where Cabo Hall seemed uh, considerably more effective in the early going and then the late going, it seemed to be mostly caught Castro, but in the 12th round when it was important, it was Michael Cabo Hall who I thought just edged him out just a little bit. So I haven't scored 115-115. It's too close to call. This one will have to go to the judges. And again, I remind you that the judges are Bill Graham of Las Vegas, Tom McDonough of Tacoma, Washington, and Dave Moretti of Las Vegas, Nevada. So we'll have the scoring momentarily for you. And when we have it, We'll have Jimmy Lennon Jr., the finest announcer in all of boxing. Certainly they're one of the classiest guys in all of boxing up there to give us the decision. What a job he does for us at King Vision and also for Showtime and the SET pay-per-view network across the United States and around the world with us on the international telecast for King Vision. What a pleasure it is to work with a professional like Jimmy Lennon Jr. I had the pleasure when I was young in my career working with his dad, both extremely classy men. And Jimmy's going to be rewarded by that at the WBA convention when they honor him as the ring announcer of the year. And he should be honored because he is the finest. And now, without too much further ado, we're going to be going to Jimmy momentarily. And uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see just how the judges saw this uh, thing. Is Jimmy? Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Bill Graham scores the bat 115 to 113. Judge Tom McDonough scores the bat 117 to 111. And Dave Moretti sees the bat at 116 to 112. All three in favor of the winner of the vacant IBF Junior Flyweight title, Michael Carvajal. Those scores were 115, 113, 117 to 111, and 116 to 112. So one judge saw it about the way I did. The other guys had it a little bit further apart. But there he is, the brand new IBF Junior Flyweight Champion of the World. All right, stay where you are, because coming up, 
And I don't know if you've ever watched women's boxing. I'm the type of guy that, uh, well, I suppose you'd call me a male chauvinist. Uh, I think women have their place, and uh, I don't think it's in a boxing ring. But ever since I've known Christy Martin, uh, I kind of disagree with myself.